So by the end of this video, you'll know how to use NVivo for your basic data analysis project. So I'll show you how to start a new project, how to import your files. I'll explain the whole layout of this software and then how to code your data and how to export the relevant bits as well as a few other options. So let's just get straight into it. So this is more or less what you're likely to see if you start on Vivo. There are differences between different versions. So the colors may differ. Some of the options may differ. Also differences between the different devices. So if you're on a, on a Mac device, uh, it may be a little bit different. I will try throughout this tutorial to point out whenever there are uh, some meaningful or significant differences between Mac and Windows versions. For now, it's uh, pretty straightforward. All you need to do is just uh, choose to create a new project. You get to choose the title. Uh, don't worry about the description. And then you choose the location if you need to change it and click next and just keep clicking. Now you get to see a quick tour if you want to. If not, then you can just close it so that I can tell you a little bit about the desktop and this uh, workspace. So very briefly, just to understand uh, where we are, on the left-hand side, we have what is called a navigation view or navigation panel, this blue section, uh, which may appear as uh, slightly different in different versions, as I said, but uh, it will roughly be the same. So don't worry, all the, the key options will be there. Uh, so now in the middle, we can see what is called a list view or, or list panel, list menu. You really don't have to worry about the names and it will also become a little bit clearer soon why we call it list view, why we call this navigation view. So let's start with the navigation view, the navigation panel. One very simple rule that I usually teach is that um, this uh, panel, this menu has everything that you create or you bring into your project. So you'll see that we can find uh, our codes here in the future. Uh, we can find our files, our transcripts here in the future. If we import them, uh, anything we create, if we create any notes, as you can see, they will also be here. So that's just one rule I always uh, teach. Uh, if you can't find something, can't find something that you know you brought into the project, so you imported it or you created it, uh, it will be among these uh, menus here. So you just don't have to waste your time going, for example, into any of these top menus. Now, regarding the menus at the top of your screen, you can see they're uh, fairly straightforward. You really don't have to know every single thing here. And also, I'll just let you play around with these things. Uh, as you probably uh, guessed, if you click on file, you can go, uh, you can open a new project, you can save it, you can close it. So uh, basically the standard things that you can expect in any software these days. Uh, and then you can import your uh, your data here. You can create different things, but again, do not worry about this. And you'll see that I, I actually never use this create menu. Uh, there's also explore menu. And again, I hardly ever use any of these things. You really don't have to worry about it. And another reason why you don't have to worry about it, and here this leads me to uh, another very important rule uh, with NVivo is that you can achieve, you can uh, do anything in NVivo in at least two ways, at least two ways, so two or more ways to basically for every single function. And this directly leads to another rule that I also teach, namely that almost everything in NVivo can be achieved by right clicking. So if you right click in any sections, any sections of your screen, if you right click on any uh, of these uh, sections, also uh, any menus on your navigation uh, panel, you can see that you get to just do things and create things. So that's a very important rule because if you're ever lost, just try right clicking. And this is also the reason why I hardly ever use the menus at the top because there are just other ways to achieve the same things. Now, before we continue, remember that if you still require a little bit more guidance and tailored support, have a look at my website. There is a whole bunch of different resources and support options available, including different one-to-one -one tutorials, uh, data analysis uh, programs, data analysis services, as well as writing support and self-study courses, including courses about NVivo specifically. But hopefully this video will be enough, so let's get back to the video now. And this also leads me to another uh, part of this training, another part of our screen. So I did mention the list view in the middle. Uh, you probably figured out by now that basically how it works is the left-hand side panel. These are basically folders. So if we click on codes, if we click on files, we get to see the content of the folder, except that it's empty at the moment because we haven't created anything yet. This will soon change because now we'll import some files. So we go to the file sections section on the left. Uh, and we'll import our data. As I said, you can import it if you just go, you click on uh, this import section at the top, then you get to choose whatever you want to import. Usually you'll just select files. So any text files, any PDFs, anything like that will be classified as files. 
Uh, however, like I said, the way I usually do, I just click on the data section of the files menu here on the left. And once I'm in this empty folder, I just right click anywhere and choose to import items. Now I'll just select my data. Uh, these are uh, sample interviews with uh, celebrities and just click open and just click import, import. You don't have to worry about anything else. Now we really get to see how this works because we are uh, now in this files folder and we can actually see the content of it. We can see the list of whatever is in that folder, hence the name list view for this whole middle part of the screen. Now we can open any of them by either uh, double clicking or right clicking and going to open document. Remember rule number two, uh, you can achieve anything by in at least two or uh, more ways. And rule number three, so you can achieve anything by right clicking and then finding the relevant option. So we can open the document. And this, in fact, is the most standard view uh, that you will, you should get used to if you're working with NVivo, because now we have uh, every single screen populated. So we have the navigation view on the left, we have the list view here, and here we have the detailed view. So this is called detailed view, it details whatever we choose from the list view. Now we are pretty much ready to start coding, uh, unless you want to classify and organize and group uh, your files a little bit. If you want to put them into folders, because maybe you have different data sources, maybe you want to uh, put them into chef and act or female and male folders or any other reason, uh, remember rule number two or three, I believe I, I got even confused now, but the rule about right clicking, if you right click on the, the word files here on the left, you can create a new folder. So I can create a folder for actors, and then I can right click again and create a folder for chefs. And then uh, we'll be moving our data into these folders. So after I select all my actors, I can uh, just uh, click and hold the, the button and drag and drop them on, onto the actor folder. And this works on the Windows version, but hardly ever works on the Mac version, uh, where you may need to right click and choose to on the Mac, you would have to copy and then paste into destination folder then delete this original. For some reason, there is no cut uh, option on the Mac. But here we can just right click and choose to cut these uh, files, go to our chef folder, close this information, right click and paste. Creating folder is entirely optional. Most of the times I do not create folders. So now we are ready to code our data. Before we do, I usually like to open my code uh, folder, my list view, because uh, I like to see the codes being created here as I create them. This is optional as well, but that's just something I usually do. Now for codes themselves, uh, there are, as always, there are several ways to create them. Also differences between Windows and Mac version. The easiest way to create them on the Windows version is just to select the uh, piece of text you want to code, just drag uh, this piece of text and drop it into this section in the middle. Once you decided on the code name, just click OK. And here you can see uh, you have a new code, I can expand this just to see the full name of the code. These codes are just example codes. By the way, if you want to know more about the logic of codes, how to create codes, how to name them, how many codes and all these questions, feel free to watch my other tutorials here. I just want to show you how to use NVivo, how to use the options, the functions of this software. Another way to create a code is to again, select the piece of text you want to code and just uh, start typing the name of the code in this uh, little bar at the bottom of your screen. Once you're done, you press enter. And again, you have this new code. One thing to point out here is that none of these things are actually present in the Mac version. So you cannot drag and drop and you do not see that bar at the bottom. In the Mac version, you would uh, make the selection, right click and choose. Uh, you have several options for creating codes. You can also do this here and this uh, version. But in the Mac, you have more options, as well as a little icon right above the transcript where you can also choose to create a new code or code something to existing code, you also have an option to create a quick code or something like that, uh, which really resembles this option uh, at the bottom, this bar at the bottom, because as you start typing, you uh, actually get some, uh, some suggestions for the codes you already created. And on the Mac, you don't have this bar. But if you select if you right click and select this quick code option, you can also start typing in the same way, you'll see uh, some suggestions. This is a very useful thing, because then as your list of codes, uh, starts to grow, you can see what codes you already have on your list. Now, one important thing that you cannot see at the moment, which may be annoying, is uh, any indication of what we have coded, because as you move through your data, you want to know what you have coded. So to do this, it's pretty easy. Uh, at the top of this section, this detailed view, you can see a little highlighter icon, if you just uh, click on it and select all coding, we can see all everything that we have 
coded and you can also see the same thing in this document menu at the top so we have this highlight option right here we can do the same on the mac version again uh, the icons uh, look slightly different but they are there so you'll easily find them and another thing that some people uh, like to see i personally don't use it but they like to know which codes uh, they actually have which codes they have used so here you can see that you've coded this uh, selection but you don't know which codes have been used so if you're interested in that you want to see which codes you used you can show coding stripes for all coding and these coding stripes are little lines that indicate how much of this has been coded and which code has been used like i said i don't really use it again if you want to know why if you want to know more about the logic and what i do and why i do these things uh, feel free to watch my other tutorial but this is not something you absolutely uh, have to have in your process in your analysis Another thing that you may decide to do at some point, although this is also optional, is to create uh, folders for your code. So if you have different versions of your coding, you may want to create folders. As you'll see soon, this is not the same as uh, just creating different categories, different groups, uh, thematic groups uh, for your codes, uh, but rather if you have different versions of coding. So for example, you have three different stages of coding where uh, initially you just develop some, uh, some initial codes and then you want to organize them, you may uh, want to keep track of all these different versions in that case you just right click on the name uh, on the word codes on the left hand side and create folder just like i created folder for my chef uh, and actor data and you just uh, create folders put the codes into these folders so now i'll switch to another uh, view where i've already done some coding so that i can show you a little bit more about codes as you can see here i do have several folders for my codes uh, so this way, and I have many more codes than I had there, so this way we can explore a few more options uh, in relation to coding. So firstly, as we have this developing list of codes, sometimes, of course, you want to see what you have coded. So to do that, you just uh, either double click on any code or again, you right click and just choose to open a code. This way we can see uh, the extracts that we have coded. This is crucial in the process. This is crucial in understanding our codes and later thinking about the themes and how to turn our codes into themes. So these are extracts that we have coded. If you're not sure about the context of where this occurred or what this means, you can just click on the blue name of the source and you'll be taken directly to where you coded it. You can also choose the different view. On the right hand side, you have a text view so that you can quickly switch between the different people so it's just a more convenient option and some uh, and more convenient view now to delete a code uh, as you probably have guessed you just select the code and you either uh, press delete on your keyboard if you're not a mac user or you just right click and choose to delete the code so fairly simple you can also rename the code if you just go to code properties or uh, what is called uh, get info if you're on the mac version then you can just rename the code or you can just click on it single click and then click on it again and uh, you get this edit view where you can change the name of the code we can also easily create a hierarchy if we just select a code any given code and either right click and cut it or just drag and drop it onto another code this or cut and paste onto another code then you can see there is a little plus icon this means uh, these codes became uh, subcodes or little subcategories if you want to get them back from under this code just select them cut them and just paste them somewhere into the blank space you can also organize the way the codes are presented by either the name so alphabetical order or the number of files which means how many transcripts how many files have this code in them or the number of references which means how many times the code were uh, the code was used in total so you can have uh, for example if you use the code uh, three times in one file and four times in another the number of files would say two and the number of references would say seven another thing that sometimes you may notice and you may want to do especially if you have many codes is that sometimes you create several codes that are uh, pretty similar for example here you have challenging yourself and taking risks taking risks and like liking extreme things so if you spotted this kind of a code you may want to decide to merge these codes into another code so here i want to merge uh, these two codes into taking risks means that i don't want to delete them because i would lose the content that uh, under these codes so i would lose what i coded i also don't want to cut and paste them onto this taking risks code because you've already seen what happens they would become subcodes almost like subcategories I don't need to do that because they're all 
uh, pretty much the same. I just want them to all become one code. This means I want to merge these two codes into this third code. So to do that, to do merging, you just select whatever you want to merge, right click and cut it, uh, and then you right click and merge into the selected code. So this, uh, so they will become this code. They will also uh, take the name of this final code I merge into. And if you're on a Mac version, again, there is no cutting. So you just have to select the codes, copy them, merge them into the code and then delete the original. And the reason some of these codes seem to be disappearing as I'm doing these things, they're not really disappearing, but this one, for example, went up. So uh, because they are at the moment organized uh, according to the number of references. So as I merged them, they went from somewhere here to the top. As I said earlier, on the left, you have different folders. So here I created the second version of my coding and eventually created themes. Uh, there is no differences, uh, no difference between a theme and a code. And in vivo, a theme is just our construct, but technically, functionally, it's exactly the same thing. So it's more about your logic. Again, I have a full tutorial about how to create themes, but in terms of the functions, nothing changes. You can see here that you can go several levels and this hierarchy, again, something I already showed you. So cutting and pasting codes onto another code. Uh, I don't know what's the limit, uh, at least four or five levels, but you really don't want to go any deeper than this. And if you ever want to export a code, you can just right click on any code and choose to export it. So once you choose to export it, you'd want to select the reference view, which is the view you normally see when you open a code. So the view uh, such as the one that I showed you, before like this one, for example. So you get uh, the export of this view as a text file. So all the quotes from this one code. If you want, on the other hand, to export this whole coding structure, this whole uh, coding framework, you would right click anywhere in the blank space under the codes and choose to export the code book. And make sure to select this include number of files and references uh, box so that your export will actually uh, look exactly the same except that in Microsoft Word. So it will list every single code as well as the number of files and references. It will also have uh, a section, a column for description for each code, which I usually manually remove in Microsoft Word. And believe it or not, this is really it when it comes to coding in NVivo. And this is really it when it comes to thematic analysis in NVivo as well, because as I explained in my other um, longer tutorials, uh, co uh, thematic analysis really is about developing your coding structure, then working on these codes, reworking the codes, renaming them, moving them into different groups, exploring these codes, which you do as you open them and read the context, the content of each code, and then finally organizing them and arranging them into the final thematic framework, which is something you can see on your screen now. So this is it. I hope that you feel that you learned something new. I really try to show you as much as possible. In my work as a data analyst, I literally use these options that I showed you on a daily basis. So nothing extra. There are other things, of course, there's other data sets, other types of studies, but generally what I showed you is really uh, the foundation for every analysis that I do. But if you still feel unsure, for example, about the different coding and how to move from one stage to another, or what to code, how to code, how to name the codes, how to move uh, towards uh, thematic analysis and creating themes, then I do have a whole bunch of other videos. This video was specifically aim to show you uh, how to use the different functions of NVivo because in the past some people asked me specifically for this. And then I have this whole series from codes to themes, for example, where I explain the whole logic and thought processes uh, behind uh, the analysis. So that's a com completely different thing. If you feel that now equipped with these tools, you want to know, for example, uh, what are these different stages of coding or what to code and which parts to code and how long the code should be and all sorts of things, uh, feel free uh, to watch this series that you can uh, see on your screen now.